In this video, we are going to solve a problem from Putnam 2005. Find n positive integers such that the sum equals 5n minus 4, while the sum of the reciprocals equals 1. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. The system that contains these two equations might look very complicated because we are now actually having n plus 1 variables and even the number of variables is also an unknown but we can actually help degenerate the problem very quickly with the help of this tool which is the cauchy swartz inequality so basically this inequality says for these positive real numbers we let uh, we consider 2n of them, a1, a2, a3, all the way to an, and then b1, b2, b3, all the way to bn. Now for the first group, the a1s to ans, so if I multiply the sum, um, the sum of squares of these n real numbers by the sum of squares of the other n real numbers, which means b1, b2, all the way to bn, then the product no matter what those real numbers are, it's always greater than or equal to the square of the following sum. a1, b1, a2, b2, a3, b3, up to a n, b n. So there is kind of a correspondence, and that's why I have to arrange the real numbers properly. Now this is a very... Um, very uh, widely used um, tool, widely used inequality, because if um, we are actually considering some kind of vectors which are uh, of any dimension, as long as two vectors have the same dimension, then I'm actually having something like this. So the norm of a vector A squared, and you can imagine uh, this A have entries at each dimension a1 up to an, and then multiply by another vector, the square of the norm of a second vector with entries b1, b2 up to bn, then the product of the square of these two norms is always at least the square of the scalar product of the two vectors. Uh, this version might be more well known uh, to some some of you. So this is the cauchy swartz inequality. But now I'm going to use the black version, which means just a bunch of real numbers, but not considering vectors at this stage. So here's an advice from me on uh, how do we interpret this kind of inequality. Is that Whenever we try to apply this inequality, some beginners might always want to um, specify what's a1, what's a2, what's b1, b2, etc. But this is not the best way to interpret it. In fact, for these three particular terms, so they have a kind of a correspondence, a1 squared and b1 squared versus a1, b1 plus something else all squared, Whenever I try to plug in these terms to apply the inequality, I usually interpret the yellow term, a1, b1, is just the, pro the square root of the product of the green terms. So this problem actually is a very good demonstration on my way of interpreting the cauchy swartz inequality. So let's see. So I'm going to multiply the sum of the n numbers by the sum of their reciprocals. Now, as I said just now, it has to be greater than or equal to sum, the sum of uh, n terms all squared. And the question is, what are the terms? And I'm not going to say, oh, the left-hand side is going to be equal to, say, um, 
I'm not going to rewrite this as uh, square root of k1 all squared because it's going to be very complicated nor I'm going to write this as the square of 1 over square root k1 this looks bad too because we have lots of uh, radical signs so I'm going to interpret that as uh, we first multiply and then we take the square root after multiplying it's actually just 1 so uh, and then we take square root and the whole thing becomes much easier so it's just a bunch of ones added together and then all squared and actually we have n of them because we have n terms inside each bracket at the left hand side so therefore when I multiply these two expressions we know that by Cauchy's was the product is always at least n squared now from this we can deduce that 5n minus 4 times 1 as um, defined by the equations is always greater than or equal to n squared now this is a very simple inequality it's just a quadratic one so then we have this and then we can solve the inequality and so we have n to be between 1 and 4 now this is a very important message because now we know the number of variables that we are actually trying to solve it can be 1, 2, 3 or 4 so from this we can move on and divide into cases so what happens if n equals 1 then it's simple because we're simply saying k1 equals 5 times 1 minus 4 and that's 1 so um, our first solution is n equals 1 and the root natural numbers are no well not r but s just 1 because there's only one number so that's the first case now here comes the second case so the sum is equal to say uh, 5a minus 4 and so that's 5 times 2 minus 4 and that's 6 and then the sum of the reciprocals is 1 now in fact we can still try kind of do something like trial and error say k1 and k2 are 1 5 2 4 and double 3 and all of them are not solutions so this means we have no solution for n equals 2 now we move on to the remaining two cases when n equals 3 and that's equal to 5 times 3 minus 4 and that's 11 and then some of the reciprocals is again 1 now let's try to solve this so by symmetry I can assume that these numbers follow an ascending order and from that we can also say that the reciprocals actually follow a descending order instead now from this we know that this is at most 3 over k1 because um, the upper bound would be all the free fractions to be equal to 1 over k1 when we add them up we have 3 over k1 so that means 1 is less than or equal to 3 over k1 and so k1 is at most 3 then we have we can um, we kind of uh, reduce the number of cases to uh, finite ones because for k1 is less than or equal to 3 then we can say that k1 is either 1, 2 or 3 of course there is no solution when k1 equals 1 because then the sum of the other two fractions will be 0 so we quickly dismiss this case 
and when k equals two, when so when k one equals two, and the system becomes k two plus k three equals nine, while one over k two plus one over k three equals one half, because it's one minus one half. From the second equation, we can add the two fractions and put the first equation into the second. So 9 over k2, k3 equals a half. And that means the product equals 18. So now we have sum equals 9 and product equals 18. And so we can solve it. That should be really quick. K2 equals 3, K3 equals 6. So that's, there we have some solutions. 2, 3, and 6, of course, and its permutations, because we, we obtain this only because we assume that they follow an ascending order. Finally, for the last case, when K1 equals 3, this is pretty obvious actually, but I still have to solve it. fraction at the right is not 1 but it's actually equal to 2 thirds so let's see now if we try to solve this then we'll have k2 times k3 equals 12 so the sum of the two numbers is 8 and the product is 12 and after solving we actually have 2 and 6 again. So it's always 2, 3, and 6, but of course we reject this one because we know that k1 has to be the smallest one. So we reject it. This is because of these two numbers. And so for this case, for this particular case, when we have three integers to solve, The solutions are 2, 3, 6, and is permutations. So that's the case when n equals 3. Now finally, the last one is really fast. This is because for the sum to be 16, And sum of reciprocals equals 1. It's a special case because when we multiply the two equations, we have this. It's at least 4 squared. It's equal 16 in the first place, but by Cauchy Schwarz inequality, it's also at least 4 squared. Now, this means equality holds for this Cauchy Schwarz inequality. And the consequence of equality hold inside this Cauchy Schwarz inequality is that equality holds if and only if for the corresponding entries the ratio between corresponding entries are equal. We have four fractions here, 
have a four ratios, and they're actually all equal. So simplifying, it turns out that for this case, all integers have to be equal. And so they all have to be equal to 1 fourth of 16. That means 4. And so that means n can also be 4, but this time the four integers are all four at the same time. So to conclude, there is actually a solution for uh, three cases of n, n equals 1, 3, or 4, and the outcomes are quite natural, the first one being just 1, and then when three numbers, we have 2, 3, 6, and for four numbers, we have um, all four, all numbers being 4. So these are the solutions to this problem.